Hello you guys, this is Janice Wilson Hughes, owner of Evolution Stoneware Pottery. I'm continuing on my djembe drum building adventure and I'm about to tie a bunch of knots onto the rings for my drum. That's my next step, check it out. Alrighty, I'm going to tie the knots on the larger ring first, the one that's going to go at the top of the drum. And I'm going to do that because I'm not exactly sure how many knots I'm going to end up with. What I'm going to do is do two finger spacing. I think I'll end up with about 25 or 26. But then when I do the smaller one, I'll match the number of knots to what I ended up with on this first one. I have 100 feet of rope here. And uh, this is very nice like no stretch polyester rope specifically for djembe making. And I'm going to cut out, well a rule of thumb is four times the circumference of this larger ring. I'm going to cut a little extra because this is the first time that I've done it and I want to make sure I have enough rope. And I have more than enough with this 100 feet here for my project. It's a good idea to sear the ends of your rope. And it's also a good idea to do that outside. What you can do is just take a lighter and melt the end so that it doesn't ravel. I'm going to go do that now very quickly before I start wrapping this. Now as I do this, I'm going to hold the ring up against me because that's just what is comfortable for me. And I'm going to work in all one direction because I don't want to get confused on how I'm doing these knots since it's not that familiar to me. I believe this type of knot is called a cow hitch. But uh... Don't quote me on that. So what I'm going to do is pretend that I have a bit of rope coming from over here. In fact, maybe I'll start this where I have a fabric seam. Put all of my ends in one spot. So I'm going to start like this is coming over here and I'm going to go over the top. And then when I get here, I'm going to go under, under the ring and pull this back through this loop. Oops. I'm going to have to work some kinks out of this rope these first few times through. And then I'll pull that tight. So this is the type of pitch that I have here. I'm going to continue around. I'm going to put two finger spacing, as I mentioned before, go over the ring and back through this loop. pull this part tight. This is where the verticals are going to pull through. Now again, I will go under the ring, pull that around, and go through the loop of the rope.
So now I have my first loop here. I continue working around. The end is in sight. Now I'm going to attempt to tie this one back through here and just make this a bit of a double, double cow hitch or whatever this is called. So I need to tighten these up, but what I have here is basically a double cow hitch. Then I can, once I get these really tight, I will just tie off the ends. Something like that, as, as tight as I can. And seal the ends. All right, I completed the top ring and it went all right. My fingers are a little sore. I'll definitely have to wear gloves later for the more strenuous rope pulling part of this whole project. But what I need to do is count how many knots I ended up with here. So I'm gonna start with my big tie off point here because it's an easy point to start from. And I'm just gonna count all the way around. So one. All right, I got 25 knots on here. That's great. Very appropriate number for this size. And I counted once before and I also got 25 that time. And this is important because I need to put the exact same number of knots on my bottom ring. Well, for the bottom ring, I need to use a different ratio of rope for it. One, two, three, four, five, and a half. All right. Go ahead and sear these ends. I should note that when I designed my ceramic djembe, I made the very base of it narrow enough that I could get the bottom ring over the base and up to the bottom of the shell. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you're going to have to get your ring welded onto your djembe. And when it comes to putting the verticals on, you'll see a little bit more of what I'm talking about. But that's the reason I'm able to be lacing this while it's loose off of the djembe for this bottom ring.
ordered all of my parts, my rope and skins and rings, custom made rings from a company called Jembe Drums and Skins. They are based outside of Knoxville, Tennessee and uh, you can order almost any color rope that you want. So you can do it to suit your project, and especially if you're making a ceramic djembe that you can glaze in all different kinds of colors, not just, you know, a wooden djembe. You might be able to really get some cool color combinations with the rope that you choose. So I chose this silver rope for my project. So far, I think it looks really great with the fabric that I put on the rings. I'll do a count. I'll start from where I started. One, three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Whew! <laughs> All right. I do believe I did it correctly. The spacing looks pretty decent. Now I just need to finish off this end. Now with both of these rings fully knotted, it's time to get these on the drum and pull some vertical lengths of rope between the loops in both of the rings. If you're into ceramics, please check out my professional DVDs and instant video downloads that are available on Amazon. All you have to do is search my name, Janice Wilson Hughes, and they'll pop right up. I think you'll really get a lot out of them. I'd love to be friends with you on Facebook. If you'd like to connect, just head over to my page, which is Evolution Stoneware. And if you'd like to know when I upload new YouTube videos, just subscribe to my channel and you'll get a notification. If you appreciate these free videos that I put together for you guys, please consider making a small donation to my channel. I would really honestly appreciate it more than you guys could probably imagine. Thanks. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you later. Bye.